Dear Muslims, in these blessed moments, on this blessed day of Jumu'ah, I want to reflect a little with you on the mission, on the responsibility, on the amana and the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has distinguished you and your family with here in this masjid, in this community. And I say this drawing upon the great example of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, whom Allah Azza wa made as a role model and a leader for all mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seeking to chart a path forward in the da'wah at Mecca and then al Madinah al Munawwara and then ultimately in the entire world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal to him the detailed knowledge of how things would go about in his area. But he gave him examples by which to strive, to work, and to seek to build a Muslim community by drawing on the examples of the prophets before him. Allah wa ta'ala says, وَكُلَّ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فؤادك. And each of these, the stories of the messengers before you, we relate to you that which will make your heart firm. So our Prophet والسلام, when he was uncertain with the difficulty of the boycott, when he had his children targeted for retribution by the Meccans, when some of his followers were having persecution and hardship, but also when he alayhi salatu wasalam achieved great accomplishment and great material ability. When he had the animals and the, the essentially the wealth that is between two mounts, when he alayhi salatu wasalam entered Mecca in a bloodless, you know, uh, uh, transfer without any bloodshed, without any strife, the dunya became into perspective through these examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. And from these great examples, I want you to imagine the lesser responsibility that has come to our homes. You see, I am a guest in your land, but I've heard much of this community. So even before meeting you one-on-one, -on -one, I know very well that there are people here that have been in this town for decades. And remember when this community was not praying in this hall. Remember when the numbers were a fraction of this. I know that in this community, there are people who are the third generation of Muslims from these lands from America. Others that came from different circumstances overseas. And together we are this one American Muslim community or this part of it in this area of Pennsylvania. So why do I mention the example of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? Because Allah Azza wa Jal also placed him in his wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala in a circumstance with his family that was not one he could have imagined earlier in his life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded and decreed for this family of prophethood that they should go from the comfort and security of their homes in Palestine and set out to Mecca al mukarramah And at this time, Mecca was not the breathtaking images of Al-Haram and the three and four levels of Al-Masjid Al-Haram and the number of the Muslims there. It was a barren valley. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recounts this in Al-Quran Al-Kareem. For He chose this family for a test heavier than your test and mine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded His Prophet to leave Hajar and his infant son Ismail whom he was granted perhaps past the age where a person might be expecting to have a child. And in this heavy test, Prophet Ibrahim was to leave them to this uncertain faith in the desert. Hajar called out to her husband, a good man, a prophet of Allah, an honorable father doing something that could not penetrate the human mind alone. So she asked him, who are you leaving us to? And he alayhi salam did not answer. The person that knows that a wise person at times, their silence carries many meanings. 
And Hajar repeated again. And still Prophet Ibrahim, perhaps with the pain of not knowing where this would be going for his family, how this would work out, maybe out of fear of even a word or a letter that would be displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not answer. And this great believing woman, she understood that there was something bigger at play. Her great iman, her great insight, when she repeated it a third time, she said, Allahu amaraka bihada. Is it Allah Himself that commanded you to do this? And Prophet Ibrahim said or mentioned or, or nodded, yes, and indicated this. Immediately, this remarkable believing woman understood, then He will not let us go to waste. Dear Muslims, the test of you and I is not at this weight or at this level. But I imagine many of you, yesteryear or 10 years ago or 50 years ago, did not imagine that the chart of your life would take you to Allentown, Pennsylvania. I imagine the fear that Prophet Ibrahim, the concern I should say, for the well-being of his family, I imagine there are many a father and a grandfather, many a mother and a grandmother that are healthily concerned for the iman and the well-being of their children in these lands and this world. And at this juncture, what I want to connect you and I with is the incredible vision of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recounts this in the surah that bears his name, surah number 14, surah Ibrahim, in verse number 37, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam sets out a vision for not only his family, but Islam and Muslims in Mecca al mukarramah and beyond. And he calls out in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherein he says, Rabbana, إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعَ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ He says, O oh our Lord, I have caused some of my family to settle in a barren, in an uncultivated valley. Those of you that have been blessed to go to Mecca al mukarrama or see her images and pictures, you see that it is not like the deserts of Arizona or New Mexico. It is barren of all vegetation. Even in constructing modern hotels, they must cut into this mountainous rocky terrain. So when the eyes of a human being would look at the situation of Hajar, would look at the situation of Ismail, they would say, how could they survive more than a day or two on a bit of water and a bit of provision? There's no answer, there's no answers in the, at the level of al-Bashar. There are no answers at the level of humanity. But the one who put them there, put them there on hik, based on full and infinite hikmah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet Ibrahim acknowledged the difficulties that were ahead of him. Biwadin ghayri di zara. In an uncultivated valley. And I want you dear Muslim, with the pain of a heart that is awake, to acknowledge the challenges in front of the Muslim Ummah today, but not to be trapped by them. Our children are facing the faces of the, the, the forces of Islamophobia, the challenges of strife and discord among Muslims themselves, financial struggles, struggles gaining living wage jobs, the issues of peer pressure, bullying at schools, all of this is real. I'm not asking you to forget it. Biwadin ghayri di zara. The uncultivated valley that we are in are the challenges and pressures facing the Muslim family today, facing the Muslim individual today. But Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam did not allow his dua to be trapped by the pessimism of people. He did not allow his challenges to cause him to give up hope 
in the future for his family. For his hope was not derived from the world of men, but it was derived from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the midst of this desperate circumstance, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam said what? عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ muharram At the location of your sacred house. Dear Muslims, Al-Kaaba at that time was not raised from its foundations. It wasn't the image of the back and gold structure that takes our breath away today. There were even challenges there, but he knew that Allah that placed him in that circumstance gave him much to work with. Gave him something through which to chart this vision. So he said, عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ muharram At your sacred house. Our Prophet wasallam, in the hadith, when he والسلام, and the companions had to make this massive shift in the test of Al-Hijrah to leave behind their belongings, their homeland, at a time where it was unheard of for a person to leave their only support system. There was no court system in Arabia. Leaving your, your hometown was, was social suicide. Essentially, it was leaving all hope. And yet they had to do this. And he alayhi salatu wasalam says in the hadith is collected in the collection of Imam al-Bukhari. He says, Inna Ibrahim harrama Mecca. The Allah, the Prophet Ibrahim caused a, uh, Mecca to become like a sanctuary, a holy space, a special place. Wada'alaha. And he made supplication and dua for it. Waharramtu al-Madina kama harrama Ibrahim Mecca. The, and I have caused the Medina to become a sanctuary, a holy land, a special place like Ibrahim alayhi salam did. وَدَعَوْتُ لَهَا فِي صَاعِهَا وَمُدِّهَا وَدَعَوْتُ لَهَا فِي مُدِّهَا وَصَاعِهَا And I made supplication to Allah and He mentioned some of the measures of the Arabs at the time. So He made dua for its economy for its commerce, for people to be able to rebuild their lives. مِثْلَ مَا دَعَى إِبْرَاهِيمُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ لِمَكَّةِ As Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua for Mecca. So dear Muslims, when was the last time you and I made dua for these lands? When was the last time we got on the floor and made dua for Allah? to make this place a place that reinforces and grows the iman of our children. When was the last time our hearts and minds became fully focused on where Allah has placed us today, whether for a week or a month or five years or a lifetime? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiruhu na huwa al-ghafuru rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Dear Muslims, in these brief moments we've reflected a little on the vision of Prophet Ibrahim عليه السلام for a community of believers. And as you might recall in your mind, the most breathtaking image of the worshippers in Mecca al mukarrama Or you remember Allah blessing you to go there in Hajj or Umrah and your space among the believers. You must recognize that as in this ayah and the ayat that surrounded and elsewhere in our tradition, that before these bricks were laid, before the worshippers gathered, this existed somewhere else. It existed in the vision and imagination of this great Prophet ﷺ. That he imagined that the Muslims after him would be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين so this weekend inshallah and as we continue on to motivate one another and we are honored and respectful of our leadership of our religious leadership of our religious director of our im of our executive leadership of our board but my message goes further today that islam in america that islam in allentown pennsylvania has a responsibility that comes back to your home and no one else's that there is a portion of this da'wah, of this amana, of this responsibility that is meant for your shoulders and no one else's. And to understand and go deeper into the prophetic example, to understand how not just the speakers or the leaders or the senior sahaba, but how everybody took a portion of this Islam and how in our times, and particularly here in America and across our ummah overall, that today is thirsty for people with the attitude of the companions. That today is thirsty for the inheritors of the vision of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, for the wellness of Islam where you and I are. We turn our hearts and our hands and our minds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua, asking Allah azza wa jal to protect our families and our children and the youth and the vulnerable from the pulls and bushes of this dunya. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard their iman. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq and ability to fulfill our duties towards this deen. We ask Allah to have mercy on our parents as they raised us when we were young. We ask Allah to relieve the suffering and hardship of peoples and our brothers and sisters all across the world in the eastern and western regions. We ask Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this community and bless the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bless all of the good work that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is permitting in this ummah and to use us for every cause of justice.